Recently, Wistron, Apple's third largest contract manufacturer, announced the closure of its factory in Taizhou, Jiangsu Province, due to operational difficulties. The factory officially ceased operations on April 26 and will terminate contracts with all employees on May 26, but will provide economic compensations as required. This means that thousands of employees will lose their jobs. Videos uploaded by netizens on April 23 show that the factory was empty and with only one security guard on duty, and the equipment has been removed, leaving behind empty and huge factory buildings, seemingly showing case its past glory. Local businesses in the surrounding area, including catering, accommodation, and retail industries, are also affected, facing declining revenues and even closures. Headquartered in Taiwan, Wistron is a globally renowned IT contract manufacturing giant, with its products including laptops, desktops, servers, smartphones, and more. Wistron is Apple's third largest contract manufacturer after Foxconn and Pegatron. Wistron invested in building the Taizhou factory in 2009, and it commenced production in June 2012. The main products were light guide plates, small and medium-sized LCD display modules, as well as tablets and smartphones. At that time, its main customers were companies such as BOE Technology, Sharp, Dell, HP, Sony, Acer, Lenovo, etc. It was not until 2017 that the Taizhou factory officially became a partner of Apple, supplying LCD modules for Apple's laptops and smartphones. However, in recent years, Demand for iPhones with high-end LCD screens has gradually shifted to OLED screens, resulting in a sharp decrease in orders for Wistron Taizhou, and there were not enough other customers to fill this market gap, resulting in consecutive years of losses. According to Wistron's 2022 financial report, the accumulated investment in the Taizhou factory amounted to approximately 1.61 billion U.S. dollars. But the company's accumulated losses in Taizhou reached 181 million U.S. dollars so far. The total number of employees at the Taizhou factory has also declined sharply from its peak of 17,615 to the current 1,474. In fact, Wistron has also been actively investing in building factories outside of China in recent years, following the shift of industrial chains by their European and American clients. As early as 2017, Wistron established an iPhone assembly factory in India. Wistron has also set up production lines in Vietnam, Malaysia, Mexico, and the Czech Republic. At the same time, Wistron has been continuously selling its assets in China. At the end of 2020, Wistron sold its iPhone assembly factory in Kunshan, Jiangsu, to Luxshare Precision. The closure of the factory in Taizhou is likely also a transformation of its industrial plan. Apple's top suppliers are located in over 600 locations worldwide, including contract manufacturers from assembling iPhones, iPads, watches, and wireless earphones, as well as suppliers of chips, glass, cables, circuit boards, and other components. Among these suppliers, China has always held a significant share, including not only local Chinese companies but also numerous Taiwanese companies that have established factories in mainland China. According to Apple's top 200 suppliers list for fiscal year 2021, released in October 2022, out of the top 190 suppliers, 91 companies are from mainland China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau, accounting for 47.9 percent. Compared to 2020, the number has decreased by five. Among these companies, 25 are listed on the Asia market in mainland China. But they are just the tip of the iceberg, representing the top of the supply chain. There are a total of 116 Apple concept stocks related to upstream materials, equipment, and other supply systems, with a combined market value of over 300 billion U.S. dollars. In fact, since the birth of the iPhone, Apple has entrusted orders to factories in mainland China, such as Foxconn, for manufacturing. And Apple has also invested significant resources and efforts to improve the technological and quality standards of the Chinese supply chain. This has allowed the Chinese supply chain to rapidly rise. Moreover, Apple's manufacturing in China has also driven the process and the development of the Chinese electronics industry.
For example, with the iPhone 4, Apple introduced a technology called a Flexible Printed Circuit, FPC, which reduced the size and weight of electronic products. Soon after the iPhone 4 was launched, domestic Chinese companies quickly adopted this technology in the production of Android smartphones. In the era of the iPhone 10, Apple collaborated with LexShare Precision to achieve foldable FPC technology. One quarter later, major Chinese smartphone manufacturers such as Huawei, Oppo, Vivo, and Xiaomi signed new orders with LexShare Precision for FPC technology. In 2017, when the iPhone 10 was released, LexShare Precision's revenue surged by 66% year-on-year. Over the past two decades, Apple has built an incredibly complex supply chain system, and China has played a significant role. At one point, over 95% of iPhones, AirPods, Macs, and iPads were manufactured in China. During this period, numerous Apple supply chain companies have emerged. On one hand, these companies produce electronic products worth over 300 billion US dollars for Apple each year, making them Apple's most important partners. On the other hand, driven by Apple's demand, these fruit chain companies have also achieved remarkable performance growth. Most importantly, because of their heavy integration with Apple, the rise and fall of these companies and the fate of millions of employees are all under Apple's control. Chinese media often talks about how Apple exploits its supply chain, but when compared with domestic smartphone suppliers, it becomes clear that the profits brought by Apple are much more substantial. For example, when Chinese company BOE became an Apple supplier in 2021, the profits it obtained were equivalent to the sum of the previous 10 years. As for the restaurant Taizhou factory we talked about earlier, after receiving an order from Apple, its performance took off rapidly. After losing the order, it immediately fell into a loss and went bankrupt. There is also the case of Ophium, a leading optoelectronic manufacturer headquartered in Shenzhen, China. In 2017, its wholly owned subsidiary Ophium Tech started providing lens modules and touch screens to Apple. Ophium's financial performance showed that Apple contributed 40% of its revenue but provided 90% of its profit, while Chinese smartphone companies contributed 60% of its revenue but only provided 10% of its profit. However, in 2020, Ophium was deemed by the U.S. government to have violated the human rights of Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang and was added to the entity list for sanctions. In March 2021, Ophium was removed from Apple's list of suppliers. Subsequently, its financial reports showed huge losses, with 1.94 billion renminbi and 2.62 billion renminbi losses in 2020 and 2021, respectively. In 2022, the losses continued to rise, projected to a loss of between 4.1 billion renminbi to 5.2 billion, and some of its factories in Nanchang were closed. In contrast, in 2021, WinTech Technology, which took over Apple's production line from Ophium, achieved a revenue of 52.73 billion renminbi, a growth of 1.98%, and a profit of 2.612 billion renminbi, an increase of 8.12%. Gore-Tec is a veteran in Apple's supply chain. It has been supplying Apple with acoustic components and wired earphones since Apple's official entry into the Chinese market in 2009. In 2018, Gore-Tec joined the AirPods supply chain and became Apple's second-largest contract manufacturer after LexShare Precision, accounting for 30% of AirPods production. In early November 2022, Gore-Tec issued a risk warning announcement stating that it has received a notice from a major overseas customer to temporarily suspend production of one of its smart acoustic products. This triggered speculation of Apple cutting orders, causing Gore-Tec's stock price to hit its lower limit for two consecutive days, resulting in a market value loss of over 15 billion renminbi. The impact of speculated Apple order cuts continued into the first quarter of this year. On April 17th, Gorotech released its 2022 financial report and 2023 first quarter report. The data showed that despite a 34% increase in revenue in 2022, the net profit attributable to the parent company decreased by nearly 60%. 
Moreover, in first quarter of 2023, its revenue increased by a further 20% to 24.1 billion renminbi compared to the same period in 2022. But the parent company's net profit decreased by over 90% during the same period. It's worth mentioning that China's Luxshare Precision was the first to obtain the qualification for Apple's core product contract manufacturing. Headquartered in Shenzhen, Luxshare Precision is currently one of the three major assemblers for iPhones and the largest contract manufacturers for AirPods. The key to Luxshare Precision's growth lies in the strategy of mergers and acquisitions in the Apple supply chain. Two of the most significant acquisitions were in April 2011. When it required a 60% stake in Kunshan United Tao Electronics, becoming a supplier of iPad cables for the first time, and in 2016, when it required a 51% stake in Suzhou Meitei Technology, entering the acoustic field and capitalizing on the significant revenue contribution from AirPods. In 2019, Luxshare Precision even obtained the exclusive agency rights for AirPods, and its total revenue exceeded 62.3 billion renminbi that year. Apple, as its largest customer, contributed 34.65 billion renminbi in revenue, accounting for a whopping 55.43 percent of the total. In addition to these two most significant acquisitions, Luxshare Precision has carried out a total of 14 acquisitions related to Apple. In particular, in 2020, it acquired the 100 percent equity of Jiangsu Weichuan and Kunshan Weixin for 3.3 billion yuan. Officially becoming the most important iPhone contract manufacturer in the Apple supply chain, through continuous mergers and acquisitions, and relying on Apple as a cash cow, consumer electronics has become Luxshare Precision's main business. From 2014 to 2018, the compound annual growth rate of this business's revenue was 78.3 percent over four years. Since June 2018. The net profit after extraordinary items of Luxshare Precision in all quarterly reports has surged at a growth rate of over 60 percent. The number of Apple components that Luxshare Precision manufactures has increased from four types in 2013 to 20 types. By 2021, sales revenue from Apple products accounted for 74.09 percent of Luxshare Precision's total revenue. In 2020, Luxshare Precision's total market value surpassed the Honghai Precision Industry Company Limited, the parent company of Foxconn, and its founder Wang Lichun ranked 44th on the Hurong Global Rich List for 2020 with a wealth value of 91 billion renminbi. It's worth mentioning that Wang Lichun was one of the first employees of Foxconn when it established its factory in mainland China in 1988. He spent 10 years at Foxconn and rose to the highest position that a mainland Chinese employee could achieve at that time. Wang Lichun resigned from Foxconn in 1999. Five years later, he founded Luxshare Precision, whose business primarily focuses on R&D, production, and assembly of electronic components, essentially replicating Foxconn's business model. In the early days, Foxconn also provided a significant amount of orders to Luxshare Precision. When Luxshare Precision went public in 2010, Foxconn contributed 18.27 percent of its revenue. However, now Luxshare Precision has become a formidable competitor to Foxconn. However, there are always pros and cons to everything. Due to Luxshare Precision's heavy dependency on Apple Inc., the risk of reduced orders from Apple has also affected its performance in the capital market, leading to financial fluctuations. In early 2023, Luxshare Precision was immediately impacted when Apple notified its Chinese suppliers of reduced production of components for AirPods, Apple Watch, and MacBooks due to weakened demand. On the day of announcement, the company's stock price decreased rapidly, closing with a fall of 9.99 percent, resulting in a market capitalization loss of 22.4 billion renminbi in a single day. In addition, Apple has been gradually implementing a strategy to reduce reliance on China in recent years, and has been shifting its supply chain to countries such as India, Vietnam, and other Southeast Asia countries. This has had a significant impact on Apple supply chain companies that heavily rely on Apple. The most direct impact is on Foxconn. This can be seen from the significant reduction in the number of employees at its largest iPhone production facility, the Zhengzhou campus. 
At one point, the number of employees at Foxconn Zhengzhou campus reached as high as 350,000. However, recently, some social media influencer visited the commercial pedestrian street in Yuekang New City, the main living area for Foxconn employees. They found it deserted, with hardly any people and most of the shops closed or displaying rental and transfer of ownership signs. There have also been recent reports that Foxconn plans to transfer 300 billion yuan of production capacity to India. There have been rumors of withdrawal of Guizhou Foxconn and Nanning Foxconn as well. One of the five major panel manufacturers, the Taiwanese company InnoLux Corporation's wholly owned subsidiary Ningbo InnoLux Optoelectronics Limited, reportedly closed at least 50 module production lines and decreased 20% of its workforce last month. The company also plans to relocate its TFT LCD module factory to India and Mexico. With Apple's supply chain shifting to other countries and the clustering effect of industry, there may be more related supply chains moving out of China. This will have unpredictable and far-reaching impacts on the Chinese economy. China's status as the world factory may be slowly declining. Millions of migrant workers will also be affected. Reports of difficulties in finding employment for factory workers have continued to emerge this year. Many migrant workers are forced to live on the streets in major cities such as Shenzhen and Shanghai, struggling to survive.